This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We spent a lot of time in the previous lectures looking at the main statements that businesses produce, the statement of financial position and the statement of profit or loss. However, uh, limited companies, certainly of any size, are also required to produce uh, what's called a statement of cash flows. And it's to give extra information to the shareholders and other users. Um, and it, it, it is exactly what it says, a statement of cash flows. It's simply a statement showing what cash the company's received during the year and where that cash has been spent. And if you look at the uh, second page uh, uh, of the chapter in the free lecture notes, uh, you've got there a, a, a pro forma, the layout of the statement. Uh, and let me just talk quickly down it. Um, as always, you won't be asked ever to produce a full statement. It'll be extracts from it. Uh, but the only way we can really understand it and cover everything is to look at the whole thing. So we'll have a quick look at the pro forma. And then uh, I'll actually work through a full example um, with all the little bits that individually you could be asked. Anyway, the overall statement, you can see there are a statement of cash flows for the year ended here, 31st December 2008. Um, and there are three main headings. Again, we're showing the cash received, the cash paid. And do learn the three headings. Uh, and basically what it is we're looking at under each heading, what they mean. The first heading you can see, cash flows from operating activities. Uh, now I'm not worried about um, all the items under that heading, we'll deal with them as I go through a, a full example. What we're talking about there, the operating activities is the ordinary trading, the sales less the cost of sales less the expenses. Um, it's the profits we're generating, but the profit isn't the same as the net cash that we've received. For instance, profit is after charging depreciation, but depreciation doesn't involve actually paying cash. Uh, the cash received from the profits would be the profit before charging depreciation. Now, uh, similarly, in arriving at the profits, uh, we take the sales, we take the total sales for the year, but that's not necessarily the same as the cash we've received. You know, they may have sold goods for a million, but if a hundred thousand, it still hasn't been paid, it's in receivables, then the cash they've had will only be 900,000. So as you'll see when we come to do an example, um, we're looking at the cash from the profits, basically. Uh, we'll take the profit figure, but we'll make various adjustments in order to see what the net cash they received was. Now, the second heading you can see is cash flows from investing activities. Uh, and what we mean there, uh, essentially, again, we'll look at the detail when we come to it, but essentially, we're looking at um, the cash flows from buying and selling non-current assets. If we buy non-current assets, we're investing, but there's a cash payment, a cash outflow. Uh, similarly, if we sell any non-current assets, we're receiving cash. Uh, it's a cash inflow. So it's basically the, um, the cash uh, for buying and selling non-current assets. Uh, in addition, uh, you can see there, uh, it, we would include any interest received if we invested money, um, deposited money and receiving interest. It would come under this heading. Uh, and in addition, if we've invested money buying shares in uh, another company, 
um, than any dividends received. So that's essentially what we're talking about by investing activities. Uh, finally, the other place a company receives or pays cash is what we call cash flows from financing activities. And what we mean there, uh, a company will receive cash uh, if they issue shares or if they borrow money. So issuing shares. It's a financing activity. Uh, they'll receive cash. Um, as far as uh, borrowings are concerned, long term borrowings. If they do borrow money, they're receiving cash. If they repay the borrowings, they're paying out cash. So it's um, uh, raising cash from long-term borrowing. Uh, and paying cash because you're repaying long-term borrowing. So those are the three reasons why companies receive or pay cash. Cash because they're making, uh, receiving cash because they're making profits. Receiving and paying cash because they're buying and selling non-current assets. And receiving and paying cash because they're raising money, issuing shares or borrowing, or they're repaying borrowings. So as you can see, uh, I'll say forget about all the little figures underneath, we'll do that in the example. But if we can get the net cash receipt or payment under each of the three headings, then the total, you can see at the end, will give us the net increase or decrease in what we call cash or cash equivalents. Now, as far as you're concerned, it is basically the increase decrease in cash. Their bank balance, has it gone up, has it gone down? Uh, cash equivalents, uh, we're not really worried about for the exam, uh, but it means short-term investments. Um, you know, a company may have uh, 50,000 uh, in the bank, but rather than leave it all in the bank, they may use a bit of it to buy um, some shares in other companies just for the short term. We call those cash equivalents. Uh, for the exam, that's not really too relevant. We get the um, increase or decrease in cash over the year. And that should explain the change in the bank balances over the year. So uh, you've got your cash brought forward at the start of the year. If we adjust it by the cash received or paid during the year, that'll give us the cash at the end of the year. So that's basically what we're doing. Just a statement of cash receipts, cash payments, but all the uh, cash receipts and payments, they all fall under one of these three headings. Operating activities, the cash generated from their ordinary trading, Investing activities, essentially buying and selling non-current assets, machines, etc. And financing activities, cash received because they've raised money or they've repaid long-term borrowing. So there we are. That's just a, a, a broad outline. And I've already said, do learn those headings. You could be tested just on the headings themselves. However, well, I'll stop this lecture here, having introduced it. In the next lecture, we'll go through a full example showing exactly uh, where these figures are coming from. And as I said earlier, covering all the little bits that individually you could be asked, even though you won't be asked to produce a full statement.